heart, Father. Cause us to see and to understand your word. But more than that, Father, that your word would be embedded deep in our hearts. And Father, that we would respond in action, Lord, to your word. And so, Father, we ask you today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let your mighty name be glorified. And we praise you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. I want you to go with me tonight. Once again to the book of Joshua. We're going to praise him. Say it with me. I'm going to continue to praise the Lord no matter what I'm going through. No matter what it looks like. Amen. You know, faith, faith is a very powerful quality in a person's life. It's so powerful that it moves God's hand. There was a man that one day said that God does everything that faith does. Because faith is the ingredient that God uses to move with. But more than that, let me say this to you, faith is a person. Say it with me, faith is a person. And his name is Jesus. And he lives inside of us by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are several things that, that I, I need you to, to write down if you have any paper or anything, or maybe in your Bible. And, and, and there's a couple of things you need to write down that you'll never forget. Faith requires obedience. It requires for you to believe and to act upon what you believe. If, if you say you believe in something but you're not willing to put it to the test, then what you believe isn't real. James said it this way. He said, God bless you, Brother Roy. He said, Mr. Marcy. He said, show me your faith. He says, and if you have no works with your faith, he says, your faith is dead. He said, but I'll show you my faith with my works. In other words, he was putting into action what he believed. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you this illustration. You know, when people come here on Mondays and Fridays to pray for their loved ones, they're coming here because they really believe God's going to do it. I mean, it's a waste of time for you to come and pray if you don't believe it. If you don't believe God can do what he says he'll do, then it's, it's a waste of your time. But you got to believe by faith. you gotta be, You got to move by faith. Faith is not, is not so much a feeling. Some people want to feel faith. Or they want to, you know, feel something, you know, goosebumps or something that say, oh, you better move and do something. No, listen to me. Faith has no feeling. You, you're not going to feel faith. There are many times people, people get saved and never felt nothing. They just prayed that prayer. And they followed through with that prayer. They never felt nothing. They never had no lightning, you know, no supernatural power, nothing. But they got saved by faith. Is there anybody home? So, so you gotta, you got to believe that. And then the second ingredient you got to have to faith is faithfulness. They go connected. You, you got to be faithful to the one that will perform your faith. You got to be faithful to God. Amen. Are you with me? You got to be faithful to what you say you believe. If you don't believe the word of God, you may as well close your Bible and give it away or something. Give it to somebody that can't believe. Because that's all God gave you to believe it. He didn't give you anything else. We don't have anything else 
to believe in except the Word of God. Amen. Are you with me? Now, imagine, imagine this. Roy and Marcy, how long have you been married? 50 years? 100 years? Well, let, let, let me say this. Do you trust him? You do? Yeah? Do you trust her? You do? So, so imagine this. If he trusts her and she trusts him, whatever they speak to each other, whatever they promise each other, they believe. You, you can't believe you, you can't believe a person if you don't trust them. You gotta trust them. Anybody home? So, so uh, anybody here? You know. So, so imagine if if you if you if 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 you if you can understand this. Here's here's Marcy and, and Roy, and they're promising each other certain things in life, and and each other are, are saying. Well, I believe that he's going to do what he says, and I believe she's going to do what he says because I accept what he said to me. Okay, are you with me? This Bible is just like if he were right here in the flesh talking to you telling you everything he's going to do for you and everything he, everywhere he's going to bless you i mean everything he'll he'll give you everything he'll break off your life everything he'll he'll everything about it is right here it's just like him being here in person telling you the problem we have is that we don't trust him Brother, if you trusted God, you'd be flying like a flying nun. We read the word and we say, oh yeah, look, I found this. I found... Okay, stand on it now. Let's believe it, even if you don't feel nothing. But you know, the problem is, is that, oh wow, wait a minute, you know? That means then that my trust with him isn't as, as it should be. I want you to see this with me tonight. The book of Joshua, chapter 6. The children of Israel have gone through 40 years of desert experience. Desert experience. They didn't know anything else. And now they're going over and they're crossing the Jordan and they're going over to the land of Canaan and they're going, now look at this, they're going to have to conquer land and people in order to take the promises of God and make them real and true. The devil will never give anything up without a fight. You have got to be willing to believe God, to trust God, walk with God, move on that promise of God, and act upon it. You've got to be willing to voice that promise. You've got to be willing to, to, to just display that promise up front. Anybody home? You, you, cannot, you cannot pull back from it. If you pull back from it, you lose it. Alright? So you, you need to understand that. Okay, now, in, in, in Joshua chapter 6, amen, uh, put a marker there real quickly because we're, we're, let, me, let me break this out right the way it should be in chapter 1 of Joshua and we're going to read verse 6 7 8 and 9 alright verse 6, 7, 8 and 9 now look at this this is what God tells Joshua he tells him this he says to him, only be strong. Let's back up a little bit more. Go up with me 
to verse 2, and then we'll come down. All right? Because i got to break this out right the way it should be. I, I, I can't give you a partial of it because then it won't really benefit you. So, so look what it says here. Moses, my servant, is dead. And he's talking to Joshua. And he says, so now arise, take his place, go over the Jordan, you and all these people into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Every place upon which the sole of your feet shall tread, that have I given to you as I promised Moses. Now imagine what he's telling. God is speaking to Joshua. From the wilderness and, and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, Canaan, 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 and to the great Mediterranean Sea on the west shall be your territory. Imagine what he's telling him. He said, this is going to be yours. This is going to belong to you. I'm giving it to you. Okay, there, there's some powerful promises there. All right? So look at this. No man, he says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. What an awesome promise. He says, I will not fail you nor forsake you. Now, look at your neighbor and tell him, if God don't respond to me when I want him to, that doesn't mean he's going to fail me. Anybody home? Just because God doesn't jump at our every command and whim doesn't mean that God is going to fail you. Say, I have to have faith in His Word. I got to trust His Word. I got to believe what He says. How many understand that tonight? You got to believe God's Word. Everything he says is for a reason. Everything he does is for a purpose. God never does anything just to do it. He's a God that has already put it together. He knows what he's doing. Are you with me, church? So, so when things don't move as fast as you think they should, don't get all messed up because God has his way of doing things. He's not at your command. You are at His command. Say it with me. I'm at His command. Okay, are you with me? I said, are you with me? All right. So look at this. Be strong. Now this is what He's asking Him to do. In order to be able to possess those promises. In order to be able to conquer the land. And take hold of all these promises by faith. Remember, God is invisible. So he says, be strong, confident, and of good courage. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law, to all that is written right here, the law, the book, the Bible, the Word of God. Come on, look at your Bible. Say, it's all right here. I got it all. It says, Quit my Moses, my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Stand on it. Keep going with it. Confess that word. Don't move from it. Come on, are you with me, church? Don't move from it. He said, don't turn to the left or to the right. Don't go and look for another answer. Listen, if you, if you say you believe God is going to do something, and then you go look for another answer, then you really did believe. Right. Turn not from, from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Look at verse 9. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You'll speak that word. You'll speak that promise. You'll speak that answer. Come on, are you with me? You'll praise God. You'll say how great God is. You'll, you'll confess to others. You'll tell everybody else, look, this is what God's doing. 
This is what God said. This is what God's going to give me. This is where, where I'm going with God. God is an awesome God. God is a powerful God. Give the Lord praise. You've got to begin to voice that thing. Voice it. Don't waste your time gossiping. Don't waste your time looking, trying to find out everybody's business. Forget that. And I'll be sharing with you in a little while something else. But look at this. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it day and night. That you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Now look at this. The more you confess that word. And the more you stand on it the more you're going to believe it. The deeper it'll sink into your heart, into your spirit, the more you're going to be able to see it be, become real and alive inside of you. Is there anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? So, so look at this. Look at this. He said, and, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. When you deal with the Word of God by faith, you're gonna, you can't, God's not a failure. He's not going to take you into a place of fail. The only way you're going to fail is if you are doing things to fail. Anybody home? All right. So let's go with me to chapter 6. Now imagine, he, he, he speaks to him. And he gives him all these promises and he tells him all these things. But listen, Joshua had to grab every one of those words, every part of that word, every part of what was spoken, he had to grab it by faith. He had to accept it by faith. But see, your Bible, your Bible is just as real as when Joshua heard it. It's just as powerful today. It, it's for Joshua and it's for you. It's for me. It's not just for Joshua. God didn't want us to just see what Joshua was going to be all about. He wanted us to receive everything Joshua had. He wanted us to act upon the word of God just like Joshua did. Anybody home? You know, you know the problem? You know the problem that, and, and, I, and I love you all, but the problem that most of you have is that you hate to break the cycle you've been going on all these years. You, you hate to change. You're saved, you're good people, but God wants to take you further than you've ever been. He wants to lift you up to another level. But how can he take you there if you're not willing to break that cycle of doubt and negativity and, and, and of all the junk that comes your way? How can you go further? How can you go higher? How can you? That's, that's why some of you, and I'm going to tell you why I'm saying this to you, because when I turned this way, in my spirit, I felt that some of you were saying, oh, now, now what, you know, you know, L listen, listen, you either want what God has for you, or you just don't want it. But it's real. Come on. I said, it's real. Praise this mighty name. So look at this. Look at this. In verse 1 down, look at this. He goes this way. He says, now Jericho, a fenced town with high walls, was tightly closed because of the Israelites, and no one went out or came in. Now look at this. God took Joshua, took him and the Israelites, Immediately, he took them to Jericho, and Jericho was the hardest place to conquer. Took them there. 
with walls as wide as that, from that side of the wall to the other side of the wall. They threw chariot races on top of that wall. There, there was no, nothing that could tear that, that, that thing down. He, he took these people, along with Joshua, he took them to the hardest place that could not be broken by human, by human strength. Anybody home? Could not be conquered by human strength. There was no way possible they could go in that place and conquer it just to go in there and do it. They couldn't. So God, listen to me, took them there so they could stand on their faith. Say faith. faith. They were either going to believe God or they are going to lose that. They, they were either going to stand and, and be obedient to the word or they were going to miss it. No one went out or came in. It was so shut tight. Nothing could break it down. So look at this. By faith. Let's read on. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho, its king and mighty men of valor, into your hands. They're looking at a city that walled up, shut down. The gates are closed and, and, and barricaded and, and no one could go in or come out. The walls were so thick they used to run chariot races on there. And they're standing there and this, look what God told him. Go back to verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, the walls were still up. The enemy was still on the other side of the walls. They, they were still on the opposite side. Do, do, are you seeing something? Are you understanding me tonight? See, see, see faith, if, if you believe the word of God, faith will let you see the, uh, the results of what's going to happen before it happens. Is, are you with me tonight? Look, 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 pinch your neighbor and tell him, come on, you got to change. You got you to gotta start seeing God. You got to start seeing things. Stop being so negative and, and everything else. Look, are you with me? So look what it says. And the Lord said to Joshua, see... I have given Jericho to you. I have given Jericho. They weren't inside yet. All they could see were the walls. And those walls were huge and big and tall. They weren't in there yet. He said, I've given Jericho to you. Then people had spears and arrows and rocks and boulders. Because, you know, they didn't have what we got today, you know. You know? <laughs> they hit you with their sock and you'd die. Well, they didn't have Maytag and all that there, remember? And they were shut in. Nobody went in or out. But Joshua and the people had to believe it by faith. They had to accept God's word by faith. I remember a friend of mine that used to pastor, he needed a vehicle. And the Lord, the Lord told him, go to the car dealership and go get a car. I'm going to give you a car. The Holy Spirit spoke to him. So he went to the dealership 
and he's looking at the cars and he sees this fine Cadillac. And the, you know how these, how these salesmen come out there, man, right away they see dollar signs on you, they wanna, how can I take this fellow, you know? Well, the guy goes out there and he says, uh, can I help you? He says, yeah. He said, God, God told me to come over here. He said, he said you guys are going to give me a car. <laughs> the salesman looks at him and says, uh, just wait a little bit here. I'm going to talk to, <laughs> he's going to talk to the boss. He said, we got a loony here. We got somebody that's lost their mind. And he goes in there and he tells the boss, he says, boss, you'll never believe this. He says, we got a guy out there that said that God sent him here because we're going to give him that Cadillac. And the boss said, well, if he's crazy enough to believe God, he says, give it to him. Amen. Oh, give the Lord praise. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, see, underline that in your Bible, underline it. See, see, see. I have given Jericho, its king and mighty men of valor into your hands. You're going to, you're, you've, you've conquered. He hadn't got in yet. He said, you've already conquered this thing. It was the hardest place. He took him to the hardest place first. So he could exercise his faith. So he could put it into practice. Believe it. Are you with me? Let's go on. Look at this. Verse 3. You shall march. Now look at here. Here comes the instructions. You shall march around the enclosure. All the men of war going around the city once. This you shall do for six days. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a war won by just going around, walking around for six days. Have you ever seen walls come down just by marching around for six days? Say, say this with me. But obedience does the work. Obedience. Let's go on. Look at verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And on the seventh day, you shall march around the enclosure seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpet. Now listen, there were was, there was several million people one day around the city, several million people is a lot. But seven times? Anybody home? You know what? You know what? Listen to me. You'll only be obedient to the point that you really want what God has for you. Seven times. God will give you an opportunity to drop out if you don't want to believe. Anybody home? If, if you don't want to believe, he'll say, well, then take a rest. Go find, find it somewhere else. Check and see if you can get it somehow, some other way. Seven times. The seventh day, you're going to march around this thing seven times, not one time, but seven times. I remember one day I had you march around this, this place. Were you here? No? Were you here, Carla? You were here. Uh, and and some, some of the other, they were, I had to march around this place seven times. Brother, by the fourth time, they were trying to find a bench. Uh, they were dropping out like flies over this little place.
I said, man, the Lord knew they couldn't handle the days of Joshua. So he allowed them to be born in our days. <laughs> Imagine to march seven times in one day around Jericho by faith. Say by faith. God honors faith. Say God honors faith. All right? So look at this. Go, verse 5. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, you shall hear the sound of the trumpets. All the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the enclosure shall fall down in its place, and the people shall go up over it, every man straight before him. God's talking to Joshua. He's telling him what to do. He's giving him the instruction. Imagine, he tells him, this is what they're going to do. And they're going to have to do it by faith. They're going to have to be obedient to it. They're, they're, they're going to have to be faithful to what I'm telling them. Or they'll never go in. They'll never break down those walls. Listen to me. Some of you here carry some walls. Some of you carry walls of unbelief, walls of, walls of doubt. Some of, you, some of you, listen to me, some of you, you know, you look at these stories and you say to yourself, man, but there are real walls around your life that the devil's tried to put up around you and God wants to tear those walls down. Amen. Give him praise. Fear. Confusion. Look at this. And the people shall go up over it, every man straight before him. Let's go to verse 6. And so Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant. And let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. Let's go on. And he said to the people, Go on, march around the enclosure and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the Ark, the priests blowing the trumpets as they went. Now look at this. Here comes some destruction. But Joshua commanded the people you shall not shout or let your voice be heard, nor shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout, then you shall shout. Now, look at this. Underline that verse, that whole scripture. Underline it. Highlight it. The Holy Spirit found it necessary to put that in the Word. So when God gave Joshua the instructions, he never told him that. Joshua added this. This was Joshua's part right here. And, and I'm going to tell you why. I want you to see this with me. Most of the time, you know, we say, man, I believe God's going to do this, God's going to do that. But most of the time, you talk yourself out of it or you talk somebody else out of it. This thing is a heavy duty. This thing can either bless you or curse you. Most of the time, somebody will come 
and talk you out of standing by faith with God. He'll talk you out of it. Or you'll talk yourself out of it. Most of the time, you'll do that. The Word of God is so real. Are you with me? Look at faith. When God created the world, it was nothing. It was nothing. Before this earth was here, before there were stars or moon or sun or anything, it was nothing. And God just spoke the word. God just said, let there be an earth. Just from saying it. Just from speaking it, it happened. He didn't build this thing. He didn't, this thing ain't put together with no screws in that. This thing is put together by faith. God spoke it and it happened. Anybody home? The sun, the moon, the stars. He spoke to them. He put them right where he wanted them. He told them what to do by faith. He just spoke to them. And they're there. They're hanging in midair. The moon is up in the air. The stars are up in the air. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says there's going to come a time when the sun and the moon will no longer give their light. The stars will fall from heaven. But that's not going to happen till God tells them to do that. By faith. Are you with me? It, 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 it'll happen. Now look at this. The same God that, that spoke those things into existence lives in you. It's not, a, it's not a different God. It's the same God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He lives in us. Are you with me? He lives inside of you. So, so when you speak, when you speak words, listen to me, something's going to happen. And if, and if you're negative, you're going to cause negative results in your life or somebody else's life. You're, gonna, you're either going to speak faith and encouragement, are you with me, and help others stand by faith, or you're going to cause them to fail. Joshua knew what he was saying. When he said, I don't want you to say a word. I don't want you to shout right now. He says, I don't want you to speak a word. I don't want you to talk to your neighbor. I don't want you to say nothing. For seven days, keep this thing shut. He says, because whatever comes out of there is not, is not going to help us. He says, I know you already. He knew that the Israelites. How many know that for 40 years, all they did was grumble and complain in the, in the desert? He said, God didn't give this instruction, but I got to give this instruction or we'll never see the promise of God come to pass. So he told them, he says, I want you to keep your mouth shut. Don't speak to your neighbor. Don't shout. Don't do nothing. Just be silent for seven days. That's hard for some people. Huh? That's hard. It, it's hard for people to believe by faith because people, listen to me, a lot of people, not here but in other churches, a lot of people are always seeing the negative in other people's lives. All they see is the fault. But they never see, listen to me, they never see what God is doing. Never, it's never seen. They never see it. Okay, are you with me? So, so look at this. Go, go with me. Put a, put a marker there. Amen. Put, put a marker right there. And go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Look at this. Look at this. 
let no foul or polluting language nor evil word nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever look at this he said ever come out of your mouth everybody lift your hands lift your hands everybody say God please forgive me I've let the devil use my mouth but I repent he's not going to have a part of it no more I want to be obedient to faith in your word amen do, do you know do you know what words can do a while ago I came out we're standing right there I was standing there and Pastor Ed over there and then Robert and Mike and, and they were singing a song I remember the song oh yeah his robe filled the temple you know he was holding I came out and I was standing right there and my mic was on I didn't know it was on and I started singing and I started giving Christians second and third and fourth all at one time Now, I know, I'm standing there, and she looked over like that when she heard that, that powerful maestro voice. <laughs> she looked right away, who's messing up my song? <laughs> Years ago, I used to sing. Believe it or not. <clears throat> I'll take your radograph later. But, but I used to sing. And I'm going to tell you something. It's been years and years and years. I'm going to tell you, it's probably been over 30 some years that I've sang, since I've sang. I, I went to church one night with my songbook, <clears throat> Opera de Voz. No, I had a different songbook. <laughs> and I went in. Man, I was so excited. I was going to sing to the Lord. And the pastor says, what do you got there? I says, oh, I got, I got a songbook. I said, I want to sing to Jesus. Oh, he says, let me see it. So he got that book, threw it in an office, shut the door, and he said, don't sing, just preach. Listen to me, listen. I'm going to tell you something, how powerful words are. From that day, I've never sung again. I preach, but I don't sing except when Christians covering my huh? or, or I'll get my grandsons I'm like, ah, come on we're going to sing something and, and because you know what my grandsons won't criticize me they love Papu anybody home? I says, anybody here? Listen, listen, listen. You, you don't understand what Joshua was saying there. That the words that come out of your mouth can either give you what you want and what you need from God, or, or they're going to keep you from the blessing. They're going to keep you from your healing, from your deliverance, from your success, from your prosperity. It, the very word what somebody speaks to somebody else can affect them for the rest of their life Joshua knew this he said man if I don't keep these people quiet they're going to start talking like they did in the wilderness and the wrath of God's going to come down on them
Anybody home? Look at this. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech, look at this, only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. If you can't uplift them and help them, callate la boca. Shut it up. Anybody home? He says, I, I need you to keep that mouth shut because we're going to be going around. And, and people, when people get irritated and, and then people get messed up and, 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 and God doesn't hurry up and do what they want and, and everything, and the pastor doesn't care and, 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 and the other pastor don't care either, and, and here we go. And, and by the time you know it, and you know what you're doing? Destroying your faith. Look at this. Only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Is everybody home? So sometimes, sometimes we say things, and and, and we, we 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 I mean we, we say things, and, and 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 I'm not just saying you. I'm saying all of us. I, I believe we all come in that category. That's why I said a while ago we all got to ask God to forgive us because listen. We got to change because God wants to take us to another level. You've never been there before. It, it's heavy duty. Amen. I, I, I can remember. I, I can remember how much I love to sing. And for over 30 some years, I have never sang again. I think to myself, man, let me tell you something, man, me and the Lord, my God, we break the record. Yeah, give the Lord praise. Give Jesus praise. You see, it's it's so important that, that when you when you when you when you see people in church or out of church or wherever you're at, it's so important that you watch your mouth. You you never know what that person is going through or what that person is facing, and, and instead of instead of discouraging them or hitting them in another direction, it's better for you and me to either be an encouragement and speak life to that person or just keep it zipped up. No digas nada. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Say God is good. Because look at this, look at this. Just go on. Because why? Because it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves the Spirit of God that lives in you. The very, the very one that was with the Father and the Son when everything was created, when it was voiced out. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And, and do not offend or vex or sadden Him. 
by whom you were sealed or marked or branded as God's own. Are you with me? Marked, branded as God's own, secured for the day of redemption, a final deliverance through Christ from evil and the consequences of sin. He says, He sealed you with the Holy Spirit, came to live in you. He said, don't grieve him. How do I grieve you, Lord? But you let those words come out of your mouth that are going to hinder that other individual from excelling in God or becoming anything more that God wants them to become. Hey, come on, you're, you, come on. Are you with me? Sometimes at home we get so upset with our children and we say things to our children. And listen, you can't do that. got to zip it up. Or you're going to reap the consequences from it. You don't want to do that. Say, I don't want to do that. I want to see them powerful in God. I want to see my children become powerful in the Lord. Well, look. Blessings. Praise the Lord. Go with me. Mark. Chapter 11. Are you with me, church? Chapter 11. Verse 21 down. Jesus had just, had just finished speaking against a tree. A tree that had bared no figs, no, no fruit. And I believe that Jesus was trying to demonstrate to the disciples what speaking against something can happen. When you and I don't understand that we, we're not we're not we're not we're not really conscious sometimes of what we're doing man. We just let it go. But but Jesus cursed that tree and he spoke to that tree, he says he didn't touch it, he just spoke to it. Words. He was God, man in God. He was God, but man. He had to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He had to, he had to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and everything, just like we do. And so he speaks to this tree that didn't bear no fruit, and he spoke to it, and he said, "No man." will ever eat off of you from this day on. And they left. The tree was still green. The, the tree was still flourishing. But when they were coming back, look what happens here. And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, he says, look, the fig tree which you doomed, he didn't say which you blessed. Jesus was demonstrating to the disciples how powerful words are. You can either talk yourself out of what God has for you, or you can talk yourself into faith and stand on the Word of God and receive everything God has for you. <laughs> or you can talk somebody else out of what God's trying to do for them. You, you can talk somebody else out of ever wanting to go forward with God. You may be able to speak things that you should never speak. Say things to people that hurt them and that, that injure their hearts. And let me tell you something, it's hard after that to stand up and say, I want to believe God for something because they don't believe I can do it. Look at this. 
And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you doomed has withered away. Man, Jesus, when we left, just a few days ago when we were here, you spoke to that tree, and when we left, it was, it was okay, but look at it now. The tree's messed up. It's dead. It, it, that tree will never have another opportunity to have anything grow on it. No way for God to ever do something with that tree because it's been cursed. Is there anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? So then Jesus looks at Peter. And look, he, he turns it around. He says, he says, you saw me do this, Peter. I'm paraphrasing it for you. He says, you saw me do this. But I want to tell you, Peter, that you can use your words for something greater. You can use your words to benefit yourself and others. Are you with me today? Look at this. Go on to the next verse. And Jesus replied and said to them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Faith in God. Say it with me. Have faith in God. So, so this is what he's saying. He's saying, he, this is basically what he's saying to us today. He says, if you're going to have faith in God, you got to believe what I said right here. You got to put your faith in my word because this book is Jesus Christ. He is the word. He is the living word. He is the spoken word. He is the unadulterated word. He, come on, are you with me, church, today? He is the great I am. He's the door. He's the way. He's the lily in the valley. Come on, is there anybody here? He's everything. He said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. He said, don't use it to curse others. He was just demonstrating to the disciples, man, listen, if you speak those words to others, they're going to wither away too. It's easy. It's easy to rob somebody of what God has for them. It's easy to rob yourself of what God has for you. It's easy. Hallelujah. You, you got to make up your heart and mind. Either I'm going to stand by faith with God, or I'm going to curse myself out of this thing. Or I'm going to curse others. Because you cannot stand by faith and be negative. You can't. It's impossible for you to stand with God by faith while you're cursing yourself with your mouth or cursing others. Can't be done. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, give him a big praise. Hallelujah. Give him a big praise. Oh. Truly, I tell you, look at this. Truly, I tell you, he's telling Peter and the disciples, look, whoever says to this mountain, takes faith. Got to believe God. Joshua's standing there. The walls are still up. Man, these walls are huge. I'm standing here with two to three million people. And we still haven't made it inside, but God said he gave it to us. Truly, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. Takes faith. 
got to believe God. There's nothing impossible to those who can believe. Nothing. Nothing. And does not doubt at all in his heart. But believes that what he says will take place. It will be done for him. Amen. Not maybe, but it will be done for him. Oh, give him praise. Hallelujah. It, it's going to take changing. It's going to take breaking that cycle. It's going to take repenting. It's going to take confessing to the Lord and saying, God, I need to stop being like this. I need to stop cursing myself and cursing others and I need to start standing with your word by faith and I need to believe you God for the impossible. Oh give him praise. He's an awesome God. I said he's an awesome God. He's almighty, all powerful. Nothing, nothing, nothing is greater than the God we serve. Nothing is more powerful than the God that lives in our hearts. Nothing. Nothing can compare to him. Nothing. You know why it grieves the Holy Spirit? It grieves him because... He wants to bless people. He wants to save them. He wants to lift them up. And it grieves him that we would do that knowing that he lives in us. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says believes that what he says will take place. It will happen. It will be done for him. It will be done. I said it will be done. Go back to Joshua with me. So here they are. Going around one time and they see no results. They go around another day and they see no results. They go on another day and things are still the same way. But they become obedient and faithful to the word of God and they don't doubt God. They keep walking. They keep their mouth shut for seven days. For seven days, they look at each other silently. Never said a word. They just kept marching. For seven days, no one said nothing by faith they believe God anybody home look at this three days went by four days five days six days how many of us want to quit when things don't happen right away for us
how many of us right away start doubting? Well, maybe that wasn't for me. No, it's for everyone. It's not just for a few, it's for everyone. It's all of ours. Keep going. Seven days. And then on the seventh day, they got to go around that city, outside the walls, seven times. Can you imagine how long it took them for several million people to march around that city one time? Now they're having to do it seven times. And they did it by faith. They walked with their mouth shut for seven days. Nothing happening for seven days. You know, somebody said one day, you know, you know how people want to get so scientific? They want to get so, you know, they said, well, you know what they say they, they, they say they believe happened? They say they believe that, that over two to three million people walking around that, them walls for seven, seven days, one time a day, for, and then the seventh day, seven times. They said what happened is that they weakened the structure of those walls, and those walls fell down by themselves. That's not true. That's not true. For you scientists that are here, <laughs> for you doubters, it's not true. It's not true. See, when, 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 when God was getting ready to move these children into the land, some spies went in. And there were a couple of spies that went into Jericho. At that time, the doors were open. And they went into Jericho, and they were spotted and they went into a prostitute's house named Rahab. And she knew who they were. And she hid them so they wouldn't find them. She hid them. And she told them, when you come to take Jericho, she knew by faith, she knew this thing is going down. Because the God you serve is greater than the God that's in the world. Amen. She said, when you come and you take over Jericho, she said, remember me and my family. Remember us. Don't harm us. So they gave her a scarlet thread. And they told her, you and your family will not be hurt if they're in this place, if they're right here in this house with you. Put the scarlet thread out that window. So here they are. They go back, they get away. I think they told Joshua, Joshua, that lady helped us. She was a prostitute. She helped us. Imagine what the criticism would be today. Ah, oh, prostitute help pastor? My God! Stone them! Because we're so holy that this thing is heavy duty. Anyway, how they know, how they know, and how I know it was God is because when they, let's, let's read it. Let's go on to the next verse. 
Look at this. So he caused the ark of the Lord to go around the city once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Let's go on. Follow me up there. Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. Let's go on. And the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord passed on, blowing the trumpets continually. And the armed men went before them, and the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, the priests blowing the trumpets as they went. On the second day, they come past the city enclosure once and returned to the camp. So they did for six days. Imagine. Six days. Nada. No sound. No word. Just the trumpets. Look at this. On the seventh day, they rose early at daybreak and marched around the city as usual. Only on that day, they come past the city seven times. Seven times. All right? Now look at this. And on the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Imagine. This, the walls were still up. But by faith they had to shout. By faith they were able to open their mouth. Man, by seven days, can you imagine? Man, they wanted to say something. Huh? Look at this. And the city and all that is in it shall be devoted to the Lord for, destruct, for destruction. Only Rahab, now look at this, only Rahab, the harlot, and all who are with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers whom we sent. Said, you know that lady? These walls are coming down. She lived. Her house was inside the walls of that city. All the walls were coming down except for she lived. Her house was the only part left standing. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody here? Okay, let's go on. But you keep yourselves from the accursed and devoted things, lest when you have devoted it to destruction, you take of the accursed thing, and so make the cap of Israel accursed and trouble it. Let's keep going. But all the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron and consecrated to the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. And when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, they raised a great shout, and Jericho's walls fell down in its place, so that the Israelites went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Let's go on. Then they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young, old, ox, sheep, and donkey with the edge of the sword. But Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the harlot's house and bring out the woman and all she has as you swore to her. Look at this. The word you spoke to her has come to pass. Is there anybody home? They said it to her. They promised her. And God fulfilled it. Is there anybody home? God made it happen. Look at this. Look at verse 23. So the young men, the spies, went in and brought out Rahab, her father and mother and brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and set them outside of the camp of Israel. And they burned the city with fire and all that was in it. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of bronze and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. It was all faith and what they confessed would happen. They began to speak the word of God. Say the word of God. 
How many here want God to do something for you? How many want to climb up to another level in the Lord? How many want to be, come on, is there anybody here? How many want to climb up to another level? I want you to stand with me. I want the singers to come. The trumpets are sounding. Second, third, and fourth. Where's, where's Christian? I got to back her up. 